When we left our last spot, we were headed towards a place called the Kochi Stronghold. But when we got there, we couldn't find a place that the bus would fit. Every little pull-off for dispersed camping was a narrow, winding road. There were dips in the road. There were tight curves. There were low-hanging branches. So that spot just didn't work out at all. After that, we just found a spot on iOverlander and we stayed there for a couple of days, but it wasn't our favorite spot. It was pretty bleak and boring and windy. So we decided to come back to a place that we've already been before because we love it here. And Mike has this whole photography project he wants to work on. And I have a craft project I need to get finished for the bus too. So we're back here at Indian Bread Rocks again to take care of those things we wanted to get done. Still a little lean this way, but it's not bad. It doesn't feel like a fun house anyway. Okay. So I think we're. Yeah, it doesn't seem so bad. I think we're good enough here. I like this spot a lot. I know. I just like looking out, and I'm just like stoked. Two weeks here, hell yeah. Just driving back here, I started getting excited the closer we were getting to all these rock formations and everything. It's just so beautiful here. It's like eye candy everywhere you look. Look, there's a shuttle bus right there. Another schoolie-ish. Oh, I wonder if it's all built out on the inside. She, waved, she came out and waved at us, her younger couple. They waved oh, at us. Well, that's cool. Maybe we'll have cool neighbors. Totally. All right. We're here. Excellent. I like this spot. I really do. I know. It's kind of fun to be back here. It feels so familiar. I know. But it's just fun because the views are awesome and there's things to do and places to go check it out and stuff. Just, just awesome. Mama. Mama. She does it every time. Every time. Mama. <laughs> Mama. For those of you who have wondered if we ever use our oven to bake in the bus, the answer is absolutely we do. This morning it's, oh, they're ready. Echo, stop. This morning it's banana bread muffins. Oh yeah, these muffins look awesome. Some of you might already be familiar with the trees of the desert southwest, but for those of you who have never been here and live far away, I thought I would show you the two main trees and bushes that you see when you look out across this countryside. And that is the mesquite tree and the cat claw, which are both covered in thorns, just like almost everything in the desert. So this one is a mesquite tree over here, but this low bush over here is a mesquite also. It just hasn't grown up tall like the others. But here's what the thorns of a mesquite tree look like. They are not messing around. They're huge and they are not fun to step on. And this is what the leaves of the mesquite tree look like. The leaves of the cat claw are quite a bit smaller than the mesquite and the thorns are smaller too. And it just has these little teeny tiny thorns like this one you see right here that are curved just like a cat's claw. When you're out hiking it might seem like the mesquite tree with its long thorns is the one to really watch out for but I would say no it's the cat claw. The mesquite tree you can get right past it with no problem because the thorns are obvious. But the cat claw looks so unassuming that you just have a tendency to brush past it and it will catch at your clothes and it will catch at your skin. It will catch at anything it possibly can and then scratch you to shreds. Cat claw is not my favorite. Although I have to say both the mesquite tree and cat claw are 
excellent hard woods for burning in your fireplace or wood burning stove. Somebody didn't wait for me before he started working on the project of the day. Not that you could have seen anything. Did you already cut it? Yeah, I cut it. It was hard. Ah! You wouldn't have been able to film it anyway if you wanted to. Look, this is how I did it though. Like it was so tight. Okay, wait, we have to say what it is you're doing right now. Okay. Mike is cutting our cold water line so that we can no longer ever shower. get cold water to the shower. Yeah. And so I had to use this in this arrangement to push down on it because there's zero room back there and I was just able to clean slice it straight through. And then I've put, these are shark bite, which I would rather not use, but um, I think it's gonna work okay for this. They work fine with the uh, Upanor uh, pecs. pecs as well as the shark bite pecs. So um, I got one on uh, the feed side and I'm putting one on the other side just so water doesn't leak out from the shower side and then uh, plus if we turn on the I don't know what would happen if we turn on the hot water if there was any be any kind of back feed so I don't want any of that to occur so, so you're just capping both ends yeah of the exactly maybe you could do it there's that blue tape you wrapped onto it to make it mark it as cold uh -huh. is my absolute nemesis right now. Oh, we need to get it off. Because of I, I won't get a good seal if we don't get that off. Okay. Of that. Just get this tape off right here? No. What? Did you say? Down here. Oh, oh, oh. You have to stick your head in there just to see it. See what I'm talking about? Yep. Okay, I'm tearing it. Perfect. Oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. I know. Okay, how far do you need the tape? Just an inch. Just right there? Just I an inch. I think I've got it. Good job. That looks amazing. Turn on the pump. <laughs> Up here on this switch. Yep. Throw this away and give me some dry paper towels, please. Sure. Okay, I think it's good. Yeah? Yeah, I'm just putting that there. If it gets sopping wet, then we'll know we have a leak. Oh. Or if we hear this thing going every once in a while. Yeah, we'll have to listen for it. All well, right, we here's should... the test. So no water. What's going on? Oh, there we go. Okay, air. Oh, air in the line? Yeah. Okay, so now we can watch this here. It's heating up right here. Well, watch what happens. We'll let it get it to its hottest temperature right now. So right now it's only heating up to 92. Jesus, it just absolutely turns off now. What do you mean? Did we just make a major mistake? I don't know. Oh no. Now it's not letting the flow of the hot go through. Come on, little guy. What's wrong? I don't get what's, what's the problem? It's not letting water through there. Oh man, we may have made a <laughs> terrible error. Yeah. Oh man. We just ruined our shower. Oh my god, this is going to be so hard to fix. I can't even tell you. Oh my it's god. It's going to be impossible to fix. But it's not flowing enough to turn on our freaking water. Oh no. I can't believe this is happening right now. It's because the uh, there's some kind of flow control in this that prevents the... Uh, Oh man, that sucks so much. Okay, so basically there's some kind of flow control that makes it so that if there's more pressure in one line than the other, that it tries to equalize the water coming through. So if you have like a lot of pressure in your hot water line or vice versa, um, it makes it so it regulates a little bit so the same amount of water comes through. Well, when it detects no water coming through the cold side, it doesn't really want to let any water through the hot side either. Oh, crap. And so the only way that we're going to be able to fix this, 
I think is it might be pulling getting behind here getting his wall off yeah what how much of this is hinging on this faucet right here and by changing this faucet would it change anything 100 percent all like of it just is take, that. taking that off and putting on like some other faucet that handle that we find at ace hardware or something would that fix like it? a single nozzle thing yeah yeah, yeah. Well, that would fix it why don't we just do that then we have to, i mean yeah. it might look kind of funky it might look weird but we should still be able to use this metal circle thing here well we right? could use whatever one that comes with it okay unfortunately i might have to cut a hole right here to get to it Oh, you can't just change it by changing this? I have to take the whole thing out of the inside. You do? Yeah. We have to do PEX work and everything. Oh. Yeah, and we can't take this wall out because it goes behind the doorway. Oh my god, that will be so ugly if we have to cut a hole in our wall. Let me see something. God, this is <laughs> such a huge bummer though. I know! They're just things that you could never know during the course of your actual build. Like you would only find this out the hard way. It doesn't have enough flow to turn on the uh... hot water heater. Okay, so what are you doing now? Okay, did I turn the pump off? All right, you see these two things right here? These two brass things right here? Oh, yes. Okay, those are the two end caps. We cut this pipe that used to be one piece. Yeah, we snipped it in half. Right, and that stopped the cold water. Right. We're going to hook that back up again so that that pressure's there, so the regulator's there. And then this knob right here, back here. That little white knob? Yes. That's the cold water going into the water heater, and then here's the hot water out. We can, we can sl turn down the water going through the heat, allowing it to get hotter longer by slowing down the flow through it. Okay, so there's something on the water heater itself yes, a, that can valve. slow down. Yes, so we can shut that down a little bit to, to slow down the water going through the water heater, giving it more time to heat up in the water heater. So we can have a hot shower. So we shower. can have a hot shower. Yay! So what I have to do now is take these two things off right here, these two sharp bike connections, and then put in this connector right here, which is basically... Like, I wish I, if I hadn't cut that in the first place, we would have been fine just by shutting that, but not realizing that was there was like a... Okay, so in other words, if we had known that that knob existed, we wouldn't have needed to cut that pipe in the first place. We could have just yeah. taken care of it by controlling that knob. Yeah, and the thing is, I knew it existed, but I forgot about it. Oh, so, bummer. Kind of ways, that's where the... Oh, come on. <laughs> That one way to turn on the pump. I'll, if I scream, turn it off. Okay. Turn it off. Yeah! High five! Okay, so... That was weak. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so what we did is I got that piece on that, that basically repaired what I started doing this morning and cutting that one line. I never should have done that. And so now... Um, I just turned down that knob, and if you come in here, I'm going to turn this on. Watch right here. Okay, so the shower is on. Are the faucet is on, I guess I should say. So watch over here. That's the most important thing. This is going to flame on. There's the flame. We couldn't get up past 92, 96 or something before. I don't think this is showing up on camera. 101. 102. I couldn't get past 97 before. Right, and if I if I pull it to the shower, oh, which is... Oh, 104, 106. When I, yeah, when I pull it to the shower now, the shower's restricted flow. 108? Is that what that says? 110. Well, 110. That's what it's set at. So it's totally functioning now exactly as it's supposed to be because you completely fixed it. I did in a Thank Rube, you very much. In a Rube Goldberg fashion. <laughs> Rube Goldberg, roundabout. You had to very roundabout. You had to break right. it even worse before you could fix it you all the way. Believe. Oh my god. The space to work in there is like just yeah. so bad. Yeah, and I finally had to just turn the camera off because it was taking forever. Yeah. And it was yeah. mostly cussing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was. It was me getting frustrated. Get, get about to turn to alcohol solving. <laughs> 
unfortunately, we got it all figured out. We put out. a light on this for me. Oh, sure. The hardest part of the job now. Yeah. Getting the cover back on. It is sometimes. Sometimes <laughs> these things don't uh, generally go everywhere. But man, it's such a blessing to be able to take those off. Yeah. So. Really nice. Like, oh, man, that's so good. I'm so glad. So we got to monitor that and watch it. If we start hearing this thing, dut, that dut. Sound. like the second you hear it, like you need come to come over this. and look. If it's bad, turn off the pump. Yeah, I can turn off the, the water with one switch right there. Right. So Wait, what is where, this one. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I'm going to go test our shower because I need one. Okay, do Wait, it. This was like a, this was more of like a, uh, a labor of necessity. <laughs> like I, I needed this because I needed a shower because I haven't had a shower a couple days and worked. <laughs> Woo! Smelly cat. <laughs> you have to turn. I can't take a shower with the camera running. I'm just shy. <laughs> All right. Good night, y'all. I'm shy. We'll, we'll catch y'all on the flip side. <laughs> well, we finally had a casualty in the kitchen. One of my glass jars broke with the brown sugar in it. <laughs> and I think the only reason it broke is because it was right up against another glass jar in the cupboard right there. And I'm assuming the two of them must have like banged against each other when we hit a bump. And that's what caused that piece to break out. I guess I'll have to buy a plastic replacement. Boo. This is like the best part of being out here. <laughs> what, going for a walk? Just going for these little walks. Like, it's you know, it's so weird. I find myself like hard pressed to leave the warmth and comfort of the bus. But then when I'm out here, it's I'm like so, so great. stoked to be here. Yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. It's so hard to pull the trigger on it. But once you're here, two yeah, thumbs up. Yeah, it's so worth it. it. Smells good. Sounds. It's really good. beautiful here. Yeah. These clouds are really There's bringing There's a neighbor camper. And let's see. There's our bus. Can I even point to it from here? I think we're right there. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Road runner, the coyote's after you. Road runner, if he catches you, you're through. <laughs> there is nothing better on a rainy day than baking. And this time, it's an oh, apple yeah. pie with crumble topping. Oh, oh. yeah. That is a beautiful thing. It sure is. Okay. Oh, and by the way, while we're at it, Kevin K, thank you so much for the most delicious tea we have ever tasted. We're having tea and apple pie on a rainy day. <laughs> Two of them. No, a Cottondale and a Jack. You guys, apple pie wasn't even the last of it. Guess what's coming out of the oven now? Oh. Enchiladas. 
homemade enchiladas. I mean, I didn't just buy a can of enchilada sauce. I made my own enchilada sauce from scratch for the first time. Oh, it's so delicious. So awesome. Yeah, we made two pans of it. So we already ate one pan last night. Now we're having the second pan tonight with apple pie for dessert. Oh. Bus life has been awesome so far. I have hot heads on my hands. 